Okay, thank you. We are super excited because today isn't like the other days. This is uh, Embracing Abundance uh, based on a book that literally just had a book launch this weekend. So we have the first tips updates and in that, in that regards, can we give a round of applause to Sandra, the author of Embracing Abundance. Thank you. Hi, guys. Really nice to see you here again. I think it's been a few months since I've been here. Um, great to see all your faces. And nobody likes the front row, eh? That's okay. That's all right. Good to see you guys. So we'll just start with a brief prayer. If you'll just bow your heads down with me in the name of Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of fellowship. We thank you that amidst everyone's busy schedules, they were able to carve out some time to come together, to connect with one another, and to hear your word. I ask that you reach into the hearts of everyone here, Lord. You can see the deep hurts, the deep desires, the deep longing, and, and really speak to them. Please let us feel connected and feel your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. So um, this is... This is the book, Embracing Abundance. Now, many of you here have heard me chat about wellness before, but you may or may not know why, where that passion stems from. So I'm going to share a little bit about my personal experience um, and some of the things that led to my personal journey of faith and wellness and, and why self-care and faith um, go together. So today, we're going to do some icebreakers. I'm going to talk about my journey. We're going to talk about what happens when your faith gets rocked. You're walking with God, you think things are going good, and then things plummet. What happens? We're going to talk about making a choice to live abundantly, some practical wellness tools, and then breakout sessions. You guys are going to break out in little groups and discuss a few things. So my background is in healthcare, um, nutrition, and fitness. So I'll be speaking about some of those things sort of uh, from a professional and from a personal perspective. So we're going to start with the icebreakers. So you don't have to go around and answer each one, but hopefully we can get a couple of answers for each question. So the first one, if you could have any superpower, what would it be? Who wants to share any superpower? Fly, what would you want to, what, walk, have uh, invisible sight, fly, be invisible? Chat GBT knowledge, that would be a good one. Good one, what else? Any other superpower you'd want to have? Discipline. <laughs> I like it. I like it. All right. How about if you could eat one meal every day for the next 10 years? What would it be? Sushi. That's a good one. What else? Mahshi. Where, Anab? Yes, that's what I was waiting for someone to say. That's my favorite. I would eat that. Poke bowl? Yes. Every time I go to uh, Cactus Club, it was by my work at Sherway, I'm like, I'm going to order something different. And every time I'll get the Poke Bowl or the tuna stack. Um, anything else you would eat every day? It's pretty much it. We've covered it. It's good. We've got a good selection. Um, what do you think the hardest thing to lose in life is? Health, for sure. What else? Your loved ones. Yeah. What else? What about your dreams? Right? Dream gets crushed. You know that that's no longer possible due to an injury, illness, academics, you know, professional, whatever it is. And then what cheers you up when you're feeling down? Pets. Yeah. Pets for sure. And break dancing. I remember, right? <laughs> I love it. What else? Which one? A trip. Yeah. And donuts. I got you. What else? Prayers. Yeah. Yeah, the sun for sure. Music. Nature. These are amazing, guys. You've hit so many good ones. Thank you for sharing. So the point of the icebreakers is for you guys to kind of hear each other, connect. Um, it releases oxytocin in the brain, so you feel like you're, you're, you're building part of a community. You're chatting with others. So we're going to do some true or false. 
I'm going to ask you a couple of questions that have to do with grief. Now, the first one is grief is a sign of poor coping. So if you're grieving, it means that you're just not coping. Is that true? Thumbs up for true or thumbs down for false? False. Everybody said false. Very good. How about grief only happens when someone dies? Is that true or false? False. Absolutely. Grief follows stages in order. So if you've ever seen the grief cycle where it's like bargaining, anger, acceptance, it always goes in a nice, cute little circle. Is that true or false? False. It's very fluid. You can go back and forth and regress. Time alone heals all wounds. Is that true or false? False. Grief is expressed only mentally. There are no physical symptoms. Is that true or false? False. And everyone will support you for as long as it takes to heal. False. I saw some people like, and it's true. Like everyone, you know, comes out hot out of the gate, right? And then a little while later, like, where is everybody? All right. So my journey, grief to grace. So I talk about it in more detail in my book. And so far, the people that have gotten it this weekend that have read it have said they cried through the first intro, but then it gets um, uplifting. But in a nutshell, I won't make you cry today. Uh, I promise. But I just, I talk about loss. I talk about how, you know, I had naive Sandra 1.0, you know, thought everything was going beautifully. Uh, I was married and I had my two young children and then my husband got sick. And, um, you know, really growing up with miracles and with everything, I was like, that's okay. We got the shroud from, you know, this monastery and we got these oils and we fasted and we prayed and, and then he still died. Um, and so I talk about how, how devastating that was, how it sort of rocked my faith, how difficult everything it was, my identity and so forth. And so there's a little bit of a naivety where I think it's easy. Have you ever thought in your life or maybe earlier in your spiritual journey, like, okay, God, I'm, I'm going to do my part. I'm going to go to church and I'm going to pray and, and you do your part. Like things stay smooth, right? Have you ever felt that way? Like it was a little bit transactional. And that's, of course, not correct, but I think it's an easy, easy um, thought process to get into, right? So then things go south and we're like, God, where are you? You know, how did you leave me? But God never promised that there weren't going to be struggles, but he did promise he would help us through it. So there's denial. There's, you know, talking to the children and, you know, drawing near to God. So one of the most pivotal things I had asked everyone I knew, every priest read every book and said, you know, why do bad things happen to good people? You know, how could God let this happen? Why wasn't this one of the miracles? I have stacks of books of the miracles of Pope Krullus, you know, under my bed. How come this wasn't one of them, right? Any thoughts on what the answer to that would be? Have you ever asked that question? Like, why, God? Why did this bad thing happen? Why didn't you spare us? What's the answer? Experience to learn from, for sure. God, what do you want to teach me from this? What else? Yeah. You, that's right. Ashes to beauty. And there's a good reason in God's perspective. Exactly. And the one thing that, that really hit, um, hit for me was, you know, my spiritual father said to me, Sandra, you see things with like a human eye, right? God sees not only like the outcomes and the timeline now, but he sees it for like generations to come, right? Like, you know, your children's children or, you know, people decades from now. So he sees the much bigger picture that sometimes we just can't see on this side of heaven. So, you know, that gave me a little bit of comfort as well. So my personal testimony um, and really a big reason of why I wrote this book is, you know, like many of you here, you know, I did go through something traumatic and devastating um, and then was able to, you know, see beauty from the ashes, just like you said. And it really, really is because of Jesus, like 100 um, percent. And so that really is my testimony. And so the goal of today, you know, we've had some icebreakers. I'll ask you some questions and so forth. But to really give you some of the practical tips that I personally used when really struggling, as well as I see professionally when I work with patients with chronic pain, depression, anxiety, insomnia, you name it, you know, what are the practical tips? So you get kind of the mix of both of those. So I have a couple of questions for you. Um, is loneliness harmful? Can being lonely hurt you? Yeah. 
And when did we see the most during the pandemic, right? We saw people completely deteriorate, um, you know, during the pandemic. And Mother Teresa will always say it's, you know, one of the worst diseases um, and that, you know, it's been really proven to be harmful for our health. So that's why you guys being here tonight, you know, having fresh rolls, listening for a little, then mingling is really great because you've got that connection. So this is the grief cycle that I was talking about the Kubler-Ross cycle. So if you have any loss, um, it's important to understand how it kind of works. So there's denial where you're kind of confused and you know, you're like, well, no, uh, anger, right? Feeling really depressed about it, bargaining, trying to find meaning um, and acceptance. And what we, and you guys answered correctly, this isn't like a neat cycle, like enter, exit, and away you go, right? You can kind of slide back and forth, up and down, understanding that you will go through some form uh, of this until you come across to acceptance. All right. Hands up if you've ever felt like God abandoned you. Something happened and you were like, God, where were you? Anybody? Yeah. Um, and so that's, you know, that's a really hard one and it hurts. Um, and it hurts, but uh, we, we really know that God never leaves us. Um, he, he doesn't. And that even when he's silent, he's working. I have a lot of girlfriends that are um, on a women's ministry with me that are single. They're in their season of waiting. They're in the waiting room. And there's a lot of, you know, things that come across the chat saying like, you might feel like nothing's happening, but God is working in your waiting. And, you know, God is always nearby. He sees what you don't see. Um, you know, and, and an encouragement to work through our pain, because if it's left unresolved, you can forget what you were created for. And each one of you, everybody in this room, has a, a beautiful, a beautiful ministry or story. And so we want to make sure we're working on our wellness so that you can reach that potential. So one of my favorite verses, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans for hope in a future. Anybody know this verse? So this is one of my favorites. And when I was at my absolute saddest, I would read it every day. And I would just, you know, feel it like a whisper on my heart. You know, God has, God has plans. Things will be okay. And so one thing that I'd like to caution about is that high performing and numb. Have you ever been in like a state of just like frozen? Like you're not really loving life. You're just kind of, someone just said it to me today, like that rinse and repeat groundhog day, right? Like up, go, get it done, go to bed. Does anyone relate to that? Hands up. Yeah. And it's an easy place to get stuck in, right? You get burnt out. You know, a lot of times it's like, oh, I just want to numb my brain, um, you know, to, to Netflix. Or, you know, I'm, um, you know, doing all kinds of things, but nothing to really proactively live for wellness. So we talk about kind of noticing this and also trying to move out of it. If there's complicated grief, if you've lost something or someone and there's, you know, it's lasting longer than a year, there's excessive sadness, we usually recommend that you get that, you, you speak to someone about that. So here's my turning point in my journey. You guys want to hear it? So, that was very unexcited, guys. I'm going to try again, okay? <clears throat> Let's try again. So do you guys want to hear about the turning point? Better, better. <laughs> All right. I have come that they may have life and they may have it to the full or they may have it abundantly. So who said this? Jesus, our main man, came so that you can live and you can live abundantly. He didn't say, you know, come and walk slowly. Come and just, you know, half muster through life. He said, come, I came so you can live and live abundantly. So I think the minute that you start thinking, I want to live abundantly, I want to just live as great as I can, you know, I want to take care of my physical health, my mental health, and, you know, use my talents to the fullest, then things really come. So, and, and from that, um, like in my personal experience, I talk about, you know, talking to people, getting support, getting help. And one particular thing I really struggled with was with my two and four-year-old. Well, like, do I take them to the funeral? You know, how do I tell them? And that's a whole nother, you know, topic on its own. But there was a social worker um, that I spoke with that had really great insights. And she said, you know, 
do a private viewing and have them write a little trinket. That's why they can say goodbye. They can have closure without it being, you know, traumatic. So again, your experience will be very, very different. But the, the key take home is once you realize you want to live abundantly, if you need help in any area, chat with someone, um, you know, again, whether it's a counselor or someone that you trust. And then, of course, who said prayer when we were talking about the wellness stuff? I think you did, right? Yeah. So, I mean, we feel supported and carried by God. It's okay to still feel hurt. Like, I remember in some of those early days, I was praying, and I was still mad. I was like, God, how did you let this happen? I'm so upset with you. But please help me, you know? Please help me. I just kept trying to show up. Um, and again, you will eventually find that hope. And at the end of the day, we all want that hope. Does anyone know the Jesus prayer? It's like an arrow prayer. Can someone say it? Absolutely. That's it. So it's my Lord Jesus Christ, son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And that's something you can say a thousand times a day, one time a day, when you're walking, when you're working out, whatever it is, you know, just the sign of the cross, which we know is powerful. It shut the mouth of lions. It's, you know, stopped buses in their tracks. So the sign of the cross and my Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me. So just surround yourself with, with that prayer. Now I have an interesting question for you. Can you describe yourself to me and to the group without sharing your profession or any of your credentials or achievements. So not like Egyptian. Hi, I'm Sandra. I'm an engineer, right? <laughs> no, <laughs> your, your name and tell me something about you. Who wants to try? Tell me who you are. Is it very hard? <laughs> Everyone's like, mm. so I was doing this with the same women's ministry, and it was so funny. One of the one of my friends was like, "Well, she's like, you know, I'm Mary, and I like long walks on the beach." And the other one were like, "Hold on, guys, is this our online dating profile or what?" Right? <laughs> but really, that's what it is. You have to dig a little deeper to your characteristics, right? Like, who are you? Um, and the best example of this is Saint Paul. So I was once asked if you could have your you're in a cafeteria. And the saints are all at different tables. You have 30 seconds. Who are you going to go sit with, right? And everyone was like, oh, you know, I really want to talk to St. Paul or, you know, St. Peter, Jesus, St. Mary. But St. Paul, in his uh, epistle to the Colossians, he, he says, I'm Paul, right? He introduces himself, you know, in the intro letter, greetings. What does he say? Does he say, I'm Paul, I was a lawyer, I'm a philosopher, yeah, I'm the bond servant of Christ, right? Like he was just like, I'm Paul, I serve Jesus. And so we, I was saying that, I was talking to Christine when she was just coming up to interest. She's like, should I say your credentials, your whatever? And I was like, no, Sandra, and she loves Jesus, you know, just like St. Paul. She's like, okay, I'm going to say that, <laughs> which is perfect. So try to think of that because this book I'm re uh, reading, or I was simultaneously, um, is called Her True Worth. Um, and it really talks about how when we get stuck on these identity idols, right, it really becomes a problem. So if your identity gets so wrapped up in, in, in a characteristic, you lose sight of who you are, right? So say I'm like Sandra, I'm the musician. That's just what I do. It's not what I do. I, I sing badly and I, but just like pretend, okay? So Sandra, the musician, and then I don't know, my arm is broken or something and I can't pick up an instrument. What would happen to me? That'd be devastating, right? All of a sudden, I don't know who I am. I feel like I've lost my purpose, my contribution. But if we're always dialing down to know my identities in Christ, no one can take that from you. So ask yourself today when you go home, you know, is there something that I'm holding on to that if God took this away, it would be a problem? then, you know, it may have become an idol. So ask yourself who I am and whose I am. So gratitude, one of my favorite verses, rejoice always, pray without ceasing and everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Thessalonians um, 16, 18. And that's really good if you have, does anyone have a gratitude journal? Nobody? Okay, two hands. Okay, so gratitude journal is so powerful. These guys, Emmons and McCullough, 
did a landmark study that was in all the medical journals and they had people document three things every day that they were grateful for. And the other group in this, in this controlled study had to write three things that really annoyed them that day, right? They probably wrote more than three, but the exercise was three and three. And not surprisingly, you know, the, the, the research showing after the the mental health reports, the quality of life and everything was significantly improved. And this is also shown in MRI findings. So gratitude really rewires the brain positively. So if you can make it a habit, even before bed, um, if you want to turn off the electronics, um, and just take a moment to reflect on it. Has anyone been to Aeroland? First Nations? Do you recognize that building? It's pretty new. You recognize the school? All right. So I had the, um, the profound blessing um, is the only way I can say it of, of visiting the Aeroland First Nations um, this past summer. And it was incredible, incredible. So the, the First Nations people there, they're so proud of this school, right? And, and a lot of the homes are run down and the grocery stores far. There's a lot of poverty. There's a lot of substance use. It's, they're really living in a rough state and they're so happy. You know, they're, they're not longing some of the most joyful people. And has anyone been to like Bolivia or Kenya or any of the other mission trips here? Yeah. And would you not say it's the same thing? So it's remarkable. You visit these places and these people are just so happy. It's certainly not having what you want, but appreciating what you have. Right. So just remembering that it's easy to get on the flip side of I don't have this yet. I don't have that. I'm waiting for my career to start. I'm waiting for a partner. I'm waiting for this. But what do you have? Right. Can we appreciate that? So a couple of ways you can do that. Consider a gratitude journal. Three things you're grateful for. Mentally thank someone. Write a thank you note um, and meditation. Exercise is, of course, essential. I think we did a workout here um, a couple of times um, to reduce your cortisol and increase those endorphins. So again, with loss, with abundance, exercise is a very, very important part of that journey. Same as nutrition. So does your question for you guys, does your gut health affect your brain health? It does, absolutely. And what are some gut, good gut healthy foods? Yogurt, yogurt with probiotics, absolutely. What else? Sauerkraut, fermented, kimchi, absolutely. Sauerkraut, miso. So these are all really great things. These are probiotics. And then what are prebiotics? They're like the fertilizer for the probiotics. So these are things like apples, asparagus, garlic, onions. Um, so there's the gut health foods. There's also foods that affect inflammation, which affects, you know, your physical pain as well as your emotional pain. So trying to avoid the packaged sugary, um, refined foods and trying to eat more foods like fruits, vegetables, curcumin, and fish, and also drinking all that water three to six liters a day is the recommended amount for healthy eating and weight loss and being mindful when we're eating. So someone give me an example. What does, what's an example of not being mindful while you're eating? What would that look like? Watching TV. Perfect example. So our dietitians are, are adamant about, you know, when they're, when they're doing coaching, not, not watching TV while you're eating because you're just not, you're not present. That's a perfect example. What else? About texting, doing work, right? So that's all being, um, not being mindful. And then mindful would be savoring the food, taking a bite, savoring it, chewing it, you know, really engaging in it. Sleep is also going to be essential to the healing journey. So again, you know, after several months of sleeping in the hospital and being jolted awake, um, you know, my sleep was, was really, really disrupted. So getting back on cycle, or maybe now your, your sleep might not be great. One of the first things you can do is set a fixed wake up time. So set your alarm seven days a week to reset your circadian rhythm, an hour of electronic detox before, um, and avoiding watching the clock. So here are some tools. We're gonna have just a couple of more slides of some kind of summary of your wellness toolkit. And then you guys are gonna break up into little groups and discuss together what you feel. If you choose, you wanna live abundantly and what you would wanna do. So whether it's meditation, whether it's focusing on your sleep, your hydration, your mindset, and 
um, your emotional agility. We're going to focus on exercise, faith, nutrition, gratitude, maybe some boundaries. You want to put a social media boundary, perhaps, um, maybe on certain relationships, um, and so forth. And often, you know, it comes up in the in the book, and people always ask me, well, you know, what about dating again? How do you know when you're ready? Now, whether you're dating again or dating for the first time, how do you know if you're ready for a godly relationship? What do you think? Is it because I'm lonely? No. So when? How do you know? Go ahead. Absolutely. Yeah. Perfect. You guys nailed it. Did anybody else have anything to add? Did you guys all hear that? So when you're, when you're full of Christ, that you're, you're, you're satisfied, right? You're not just trying to fill like a a whole, um, because that often, you know, you're not setting yourself up for the, the, the right relationship versus when you're fulfilled. How about, how about, are you looking for someone to make you happy? Is that the primary objective? So no, right? So the idea is you're able to, you know, you have joy with your relationship with God, with your wellness, with everything. And then you're looking for someone to, to complement that. Um, you know, considerations if you're online dating or in line or in person um and who is jesus to you and we also just want to focus on that humor um so i'll tell you maybe one or two of my favorite biblical biblical jokes um because laugh therapy is very good for your mental health as well who was the fastest runner in the bible adam the first one in the human race what kind of car did the disciples drive a Honda, because they were all of one accord. Um, who is the greatest financier in the Bible? Noah, floating his stock while everyone else was in liquidation. Who does the Bible say should make the coffee, he or she? Hebrews, in the book of Hebrews. And what was Boaz like before he got married? He was ruthless. Um, so it, it's, uh, that was really funny. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so I talked about that a little bit about grief and about my own experience in, in redating and then the Boaz that God sent. Some of you know, this handsome man right over there. How do you feel joy in the Lord? So find God's purpose for you. You have one. Does anyone here know their purpose yet or not yet? Put your hand up if you know God's use for you, your talents. So, so, so a couple of people are like, maybe, maybe amazing. So that just means that it's still going to be revealed and God's got something, you know, really great to reveal for you. So pray for it. Say, God, show me how you want to use me. Um, you know, and it's the best thing. Look for God in everything. Praise God and sing like Coptic karaoke meditation and remember his miracles. So words to live by, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kind, because you know that testing of your faith produces perseverance, that perseverance finish its work so you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. So someone shared, I think you did, that, you know, God is going to use it to make something beautiful, beauty from the ashes. So hardship often prepares an ordinary person for an extraordinary destiny. That's C.S. Lewis. Does anyone read the Chronicles of Narnia? Anyone here? No? Yeah. I was just, uh, Father Arsenius, I follow him on Instagram, and he was saying that it has a lot of uh, biblical principles. So call to action. I'm going to come around and I'm going to break you guys up into groups, maybe four groups, um, and then you're going to just chat amongst yourselves. We're, we're, we're almost done for today, so for about three, four minutes, you're going to chat in your little groups, and you're going to uh, discuss, A, do I want to live abundantly? Have I been holding back? And if so, what do I want to do more fully, right? Maybe it's focusing more on your nutrition or your sleep or, you know, or something like that. And, uh, and that's it. So we're going to come around and we're going to break you guys up. We're going to go exactly. So just follow the, the numbering. Okay. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one,
two, three, four. One, two, three, four. John, one, two, behind you, Christina, three, four, and one. All right, everybody got their numbers? So ones are going to come over here. You guys can just, like, come on over to these chairs. Twos are going to go over there. Threes, that corner, and fours, that corner. All right, everybody knows where to go. You can just pull up your chairs. So one, two, three, and four. One is over here. Yeah, one is like here. Yeah, and two is over there. Three is the back corner there. You guys can find each other. And then four is that corner behind one. So guys, you've got about three minutes in your group. Everyone will have a chance to kind of say to each other, like, yes, I want to live more abundantly. And, you know, and, and from your heart, like, what could you be doing um, that you want to focus on? Maybe a one, two, three wellness tips. Maybe you're like my prayer, my Bible reading, I, you know, my exercise, having been taking care of my physical health, my nutrition, my sleep, whatever it is. And then just share it with uh, each other. Okay. So about three minutes. Guys, I'm just going to add one comment. When you're making um, your suggestion or your commitment to your group, please make sure it's a smart goal, right? So specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timed. So for example, if I just say I'm going to work out more, right? That That's really vague, right? So then I would say, you know what? Two days a week, I'm going to do a 20-minute, you know, video at home, for example, right? Or like instead of I'm going to eat better, right? It might be, okay, I'm going to make a conscious effort to add kefir, you know, to my mornings or, you know, a probiotic, something like specific. You see what I mean? Like choose whatever you like, but like, you know, I'm going to read my Bible more. Well, what does that mean? Okay. I'm going to spend, you know, 10 minutes on my lunch break, reading the first hour, that kind of thing. Okay. So carry on. It'll just be much easier to follow through than a vague statement.
One more minute. One minute. All right, team, so I think we're going to wrap it up. Um, everybody everybody done? Yeah, more or less? Okay, go ahead. Like, not with the whole group. Like, go ahead with your group. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. So we'll ask each group to maybe share uh, a couple of things, if you like. Do you guys want to share some of what you guys came up with? Like, like answering those questions or? Um, so we talked about how we can have more intentional prayer and not just like a routine prayer saying it uh, like as of something that's memorized, but actually having a personal meaning in that prayer. So, so feeling like you're actually connecting with God. Um, and also just more intentional gratitude. Um, and I thought of maybe like, you know, reflecting um, on what we have and maybe also thinking beyond like things that aren't working out for ourselves, but looking at like, you know, the suffering of other people as well. So kind of expanding that. Um, and I think we also kind of had a group goal of seeing if we can do three days of more intentional prayer per week. So, yeah. Good job, guys. Thank you. Good job. Good job. Yes. Good oh, team. All right, guys, who wants to share from this group? No pressure. <laughs> uh, I said I wanted to go to the gym when it's least busy after work because I work part-time, and I want to read the New Testament by the end of the year. Good job, guys. Thank you. You guys want to share some of your ideas here? Well, they're fighting over the mic, guys. Hold on. Let me just... Hold them back. <laughs> so our um, our intentional actions were, were to uh, specifically, I don't know, when like make time for obviously for healthness, uh, wellness, not just the gym, and um, but making sure we have our prebiotics, probiotics, fitting it into a schedule in in our routine, not just like oh okay like going accidentally <laughs> or whatnot. Um, I think making it a priority to put it in your schedule and, and um, I don't know, putting it as a priority because it helps you with stress and, and your, your, health, your health, your immune system, and then you can even focus on the, the other uh, things that the other groups had mentioned. And our group here, who would like to share? Who did? I 
time, yeah? You were volun uh, you were voluntold. <laughs> We just, uh, well, I'll just, we all just talked about what our goals were and uh, we tried to be specific about them. I was sharing that um, I'm in a, a private group and we have health goals and two of mine, two of mine were uh, basically to exercise every day for at least 30 minutes, either outside or inside and the other what's other of the five, but this is the second one, is just really minimize having processed food and I feel so much better already. Yeah, so. Good job, guys. Thank you for sharing. So, so all of the groups have shared now, and I think you know there's something to be said about verbalizing it, right, to the people around you. There's that little bit of encouragement and accountability, and you know, hopefully, you guys see each other every week. So, I'm hoping that when you guys see each other next week, you can be like, "Hey, how was the three days of an intentional praying? How were the probiotics? You know, how was the processed food and so forth?" So, um, you know, how's the gym after work and and all of these things. So, it'd be nice to hold each other accountable. Any other questions or points from the talk today? Any burning questions, comments? All right. So we're going to wrap it up in, in prayer. The last quote is, God is the giver and sustainer of hope. If you have any additional questions and you want to connect, you can email me. You can connect on Instagram or you can chat with me after the uh, session. I'll be around a little bit. So I guess we'll wrap it up in maybe a closing prayer if anybody would like to pray. Any volunteers? All right, I'll, uh, I'll pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you. We truly, truly thank you for just such a beautiful evening and opportunity to, to come here. It is no coincidence you've called each of us by name into your home. Um, you know the connections that we're meant to make, Lord, and the things that we're supposed to take away in our heart and, and help us really choose every day to be intentional and, and to actively choose to live abundantly for you, working on, you know, our body, our health, physical, emotional well-being, which are all gifts from you, Lord. Let us glorify you and testify with the good works that you do in our names. Please keep everyone and safe and sound and gather us all together again in Jesus name amen thank you guys thank you let's have another round of applause for Sandra who loves Jesus <laughs> thank you